about the strides female entrepreneurs of color are making. Be inspired by their story and enlightened by their leadership insight, insight and advice. Welcome to Winners United. This is season seven, episode 17, entitled Perspective is Everything with Tay Lee. I'm your host, Nicole Walker, and I believe that business, mindset, personal development, and self-care are the four pillars to entrepreneurial success. This is why When Hers United is your one-stop shop for business, mindset, personal development, and self-care conversations with winning women of color entrepreneurs. Please don't forget to go to Apple Podcasts and give Winners United a rating and review. All you need to do is go to the show page, scroll to the bottom, click the five stars, then write a review. It shouldn't take more than five minutes of your time, and I would greatly appreciate it. And as a thank you, I'll be giving shout outs on future episodes to those that take time to write us a review. During this episode, you will hear about the importance of having supportive people around you, how it takes money to make money, the value of hard work, taking time for yourself to avoid burnout and resentment, and much more. But before we get into the episode, let me tell you more about Tay Lee. Tay Lee is known as the money maximizer. She's an international best-selling author, speaker, coach, and financial literacy trainer. Tay Lee's goal is to impart financial knowledge on others so they can experience successful entrepreneurship with the freedom and money to live life on their terms. And one of her goals is to help 10,000 people become financially free and create generational wealth. So without further ado, here is Perspective is Everything with Tay Lee. All right, Tay, so welcome to Winners United. We are excited to learn more about you and your journey. Hey, I'm happy to be on here today. All right. Awesome. So let's get started by you telling us about your professional background and what you currently do professionally. So my professional background is all things money. (laughs) It's all things money. And currently our company is called Never Go Broke. We're a financial literacy company. Okay. All right. Look, short and to the point. Look, Look, money, we all understand that, right? And I think that is super needed. So... How do you help people? So it just really depends. We do different things. So we help entrepreneurs. We help kids. We teach everybody about the basics when it comes to money. So we give them a foundational blueprint. We give them financial guidance. We give them education just to teach them how to be, you know, successful in life with money. Okay. All right. Look, up my alley. (laughs) Tell us how you ended up in your current profession. Mm, Let me see. Let me see. How did I end up here? I think people were always asking me for free. And I was like, let's charge. (laughs) I want to say that's what it was because people were always asking me, well, how do you do this with money? And then how do you build this with real estate or how do I invest in here? And so from there, we just decided to start a business, helping people do it. Because we all want to know about financial literacy at some point in our life, whether we're young or old. Yeah. So do you have a background in finance or is this all from experience? It's all experience. My degree is in education. Okay, nice. All right. So tell us what you wanted to be when you grew up. So I want to say I wanted to be an actress, but I have stage fright. Okay. I don't think that ever happened. But I'm guessing that's what it was. But I don't know. I've always been like, people always say, what did you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, I don't know. I know I just wanted, I wanted to be like an actress or somebody that, you know, talked on TV and everything. But like I said, I got really bad stage fright. Mm. Well, I find that to be interesting, right? Because I follow your journey and you're pitching this and pitching that and, you know, on all these different media outlets. So how much stage fright do you really have? I have a lot. I have a lot of stage fright. Every time I get up there, I'm like shaking. (laughs) Like I'm always shaking. Like I have, I'm terrified on stage. Every time I'm up there, like I start getting cotton mouth. 
Interesting. And say so they say cotton mouth is nervousness. Okay. Okay. So, um, and it's so crazy to me because I'm like, it really comes natural, but I just I don't know what it is. I just yeah. always be like, oh gosh, oh gosh, and then yeah. But I have really bad stage fright. I guess people mm. say they can't tell. But yeah. I do. <laughs> I really, really do. Interesting. So to me, that says do it anyway, right? Do it scared because I love that you're not allowing that to stop you from everything that you're doing, right? Because it goes along with your profession. Right. Because how can I make money? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta make the money. Gotta make the money. So yeah. All right. So tell us about what kind of upbringing that you had as a child. I had a pretty good upbringing. My father's military. So we traveled around a little bit. My mom had her own business. So I started working at eight. That was a lot. So, I mean, I had a pretty good upbringing. I have very supportive parents and things like that. I like that. Right. And you said something that I think is key to just painting an overall picture. Right. Because I believe that what we are exposed to plays a large role in how our life develops right? And the fact that your mom was an entrepreneur and here you are, right? Because you're here talking about money, right? But I have heard your story from attending a training with you teaching, right? So I also know that you're also a serial entrepreneur, right? And having that support, I think that that's major and something that, you know, not everyone has, but the people that have it, you know, tend to have a smoother sail than others. So like for me, having support is always good. So regardless of what I did, my parents always supported me. Family always supported me because they're like, we want to see you win. Like, that's how life is. Everything doesn't have to be a struggle. Now, entrepreneurship is a struggle because nothing ever goes right or according to plan and you have everything in order. But I still have very supportive people around me to help me with everything that I do. Yes, And I I think that's one of the key things to being an entrepreneur or anything in life. Like, If you always got people around you that are like downing you and not there for you, it can make whatever you're trying to do harder. But if you have a great support team, whether it's friends, families, coaches, or somebody you walking down the street and they just tell you something awesome, that helps with any process, what you're doing, especially entrepreneurship, because it can get really hard and depressing and things like that. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. That is a gem for all those listening, right? The people that we surround ourselves with need to be supportive so that we can continue on this journey because like you said it's not always easy you said something i want to touch on briefly you said in entrepreneurship things rarely go as planned right so like what do you have a tip or two for people that like how to navigate that uncertainty or when things don't go the way we want because i think that could be easy an easy out for people to give up you know, to think that their plan was bad or, you know, they're going in the wrong direction? Do you, how do you navigate that? For me, I have to talk it out and then figure out other options. I can't necessarily let myself get too down in the dumps about it because it's get real in the field. (laughs) It gets real, (laughs) real. So it's one of those things like, okay, so I'm trying to do this. And I'm not saying it rarely goes with the plan, but a lot of times, I don't, it's just stuff never, I'm not going to say it don't ever go right. But when you have to maybe depend on other people or depending on what your business is, you got to have this, this, and that, it may not go according to plan. But for me, I have to talk it out. And that talking out may be with myself or that talking out may be with a coach. It may be with somebody. And I always say when things are not going right and you can't figure it out and Stuff is not going the course that you plan to do it. Sit there and talk it out with yourself or whoever it is and devise another plan to get it done. Because for entrepreneurship, if this is your money and how you make your money, everything that you do, you can't dwell on it and be sad about it for weeks at a time because you still have to make money. So just sit there and breathe first. Breathe <laughs> or cry or whatever it is that you need to do talk it out and then figure out if it's another plan to make certain situations better. I love it. I love it. Right. With yourself first and if needed with others as well. Yeah. And cry, crying always helps. 
Yes. <laughs> I ain't look, always help. Look now, now that's a that's a struggle bus area for me, right? I went years at one time without crying, and that hardened me. Like mm-hmm. hardened me so much. So I love that advice. It's okay to cry. All day. All day. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Drop them tears because when the tears come, you may see the light. And you'd be like, oh, that's what I need to do. That's what I need to do to change everything. So cry. I love that. <laughs> All right. All right. Look, it is okay to cry. So tell us about a pivotal point in your life and how it shaped who you are today. Pivotal point in my life. Hmm. What's pivotal? Not being able to find a job. (laughs) That's what shaped my life. Going to college and saying, oh, yeah, I'm in college. It's going to be so great. And I'm going to be this awesome teacher that does everything in education, which I'm still in that field, but just not in my degree and then I go out into the real world and I'm like oh oh so nobody won't hire me oh so you mean I still got pay these loans yeah <laughs> yeah that was pivotal for me it was pivotal for me to know that the American dream is not the American dream mm. that was pivotal that shaped me because I had to figure something out that's a whole word that is a whole word so I want to talk on two things from that so you after getting your degree, you never like worked for anyone from that experience? You went straight into entrepreneurship? No. So I bartended okay. and waitress. But okay. besides that, nobody would hire me. I started bartending before I graduated from college. And then when I got out of college, I still bartended or whatnot. But I started waitressing at a restaurant because the place I was working at had shut down. So I started waitressing at a restaurant and I realized how much I hated it. I was like, oh, this is so different from, you know, bartending at a lounge or waitressing at a restaurant because, oh, that's a lot of work. So I just realized how much I hated it. And then from there, I went into entrepreneurship. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. Personally, I remember coming out of college and, you know, applying, applying, not hearing back. And I remember someone telling me like college doesn't tell people you know how to do the particular skill, right? It just tells them that you know how to learn, which isn't necessarily what employers look for, right? How can I get experience when you won't give me experience? That's what I always say. I'm going to get experience. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what to do. Like, you want me to have experience to get this job, but I have no experience because nobody won't hire me because I don't have any experience. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's my big thing. They don't teach you what to do after college. Yes. They go to college and... Once you go, you're going to get out and you're going to make all this money. You're going to do this. But they don't say, but what if none of that happens? Hmm. Like, what if none of that happens? What are you going to do next? Because those student loans start within six months. And you're like, I can't pay no student loans. I ain't got no money. (laughs) I can't find no job. What am I going to do? So, yeah. Mm, That's a whole world. My daughter is graduating from college next month. What is she in school for? Music production. Okay. So does she know or she's trying to figure it out? <laughs> you know, that we look, I, look, I'm, I want to stay in a good mood, right? So we, <laughs> <laughs> You said we ain't going to talk about that today. Oh my goodness. But what you're saying is true. And I think that it is an unfortunate reality, right? And I do agree that there needs to be more conversation around the next step, but I love how you know, entrepreneurship is really booming now and people are really understanding and realizing that they have gifts. And if everyone else says no, then you better figure out a way to tell yourself yes. People are going to tell you no every day. You just need that one good yes. Yeah, yeah. When you get that one good yes, it may change your life. Hmm. So I, I ask everybody, oh, y'all tell me no. <laughs> and then when they tell me no, I say, yeah, that's just me, not today. You left off the T, not today. <laughs> I'll try back later and see how it goes. I love that. So that is a mindset shift that I think a lot of entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs, you know, need to hear because I know like the first few times I heard no, it could be defeating, right? Like, especially like me, I was a spoiled child, right? My grandmother gave me everything I wanted, you know? So then you get in the real world and you hear these no's, that's like, could be the end of the world. But I love that perspective not today, right? Like, oh, you forgot something, but I'm going to remind myself that you forgot it. All right. So tell us what you're currently doing to improve yourself personally and professionally. 
Personally and professionally, personally, how do I improve myself? Reading is always an improvement and just trying to learn as much as I can, like researching and trying things out. Like those are big for me. Reading is big. Researching is big. And just being by myself is big. <laughs> like I like to be by myself with silence and everything because I feel like that helps a lot in life because depending on what your career is and what you have going on, you can like be around a lot of people all the time. So I do a lot of things in silence. So people watch TV and all that stuff. I don't do any of that. Or like mm -hmm. they, they listen to music all the time or listen to the radio all the time. I really don't do a lot of those things. I usually drive in silence for me because that helps me figure out different things. Okay. I like that. I'm going to touch back on the reading, but I like the silence, you know, and understanding who you are, right? Because you said like for me. And I think that that for me could be overlooked, right? Like for me is like what may work for another person may not work for you, but really taking the time to figure yourself out, you know, and how to operate the best for you is a gem within itself. If you don't take out time for yourself, then it could be funny because if you're always working and always doing stuff for other people or fulfilling obligations, then it can get overwhelming for you. And you can get burned out. You can start hating people. You'll start despising your life in the business that you thought you wanted or thought you loved because you're always doing stuff for other people instead of just saying, you know what? I'm just going to go in the bathroom and close the door so I don't want to buy talk to me for 30 minutes. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just going to sit in the car just a little bit longer before I go in the house because I got to deal with, you know, husband, wife, kids, dog, or whatever, or Every time I'm at the office, I got to talk to people. I don't want to talk to nobody. So I'm going to do this for me. Everybody has their own way that they do it. But for me, I'm just, I like the silence. Yes. It's okay to be selfish. I think selfish needs a redefinition, right? Because we've been taught to give or the narrative has always been to give. But if you always give out, what are you putting in, right? Right. All right. So you talked about reading to improve yourself personally. Let us know the latest book that you've read and what it's about. Hmm. Well, I haven't been reading. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been reading as much this year just because I have other stuff going on, but I usually try to read. So at first I was on one book a month, right? That was so fun. I used to do one nice. book a month. Yeah. I used to do one book a month and then talk about it. Okay. And then like talk about the whole book, like on a live, because I like doing it. But this year I haven't been able to read as much because I just have other stuff going on. My goal is to start back in June. June. June 1 is my goal to start back doing one book a month. Okay. We like goals. We like goals around here. And it's okay if your goal gets derailed, right? But I like that start back. But what was the last book that you read? Oh, Lord. Oh, you know that book. <laughs> oh God! No. So this one book I read and I read it again. It's called Make Your Bed. Ten small things you can do that'll change your life. Mm. It's by this corporal or whatnot. So I try to read that book at least once a year because okay. it makes me make my bed every day. Mm. So I never leave the house unless my bed is made. Unless I'm just like washing sheets or something, and then I'm like, oh okay, I'll come back to it. <laughs> I'll come back to it. But it just talks about how if nothing else gets accomplished today, at least you made your bed. Mm, I and like so that. for some reason, every time I read the book, I'm like, you have to make sure your bed is made every day. And then he just gives different tips about life and how different things affect you. But for me, that book was great because I'm just like, I ain't never used to make my bed. I used to say, why well, I got to get back in it? Well, I'm making it up for <laughs> <laughs> Got to get right back in the bed. But some days I've had days where I'm just like, nothing got accomplished. But I made my bed. And when I go home, it just gives me like peace. Mm, I like that. I like that because I, I forget exactly what it was, but I know I've read something or heard something about the effects of making your bed and how it lays the foundation for your day. So I think that that's awesome. What's your perspective on becoming a podcaster? 
Have you considered it? Send me an email and let me know. I believe we all have something valuable to share with the world. And I would love to help you share your insight. So send me an email at winhersunited at gmail.com. That's W-I-N-H-E-R-S-U-N-I-T-E-D at gmail.com. And let's discuss your future as a podcaster. And since we're on the foundation for your day, tell us about your morning routine. How does your day start? Wake up, pray, gym, work. <laughs> That's usually how my day go. I go to the gym in the morning because gym is like the thing or whatnot. So I go to the gym in the morning. Well, I wake up, pray, gym, do what I have to do, and then get started for work. Okay. And why... Why have you chose those things or how have they benefited you? Well, I just feel like I have to pray. I mean, it's part of life, part of things I have to do. And then gym, that's like my stress reliever. Okay. So gym is my stress reliever. So it's like I may be mad about something or something then work out. Well, I'm about to work this out. <laughs> It'll give me something. I'm about to throw some heavy. I got to do something. So yeah, gym is always that for me. Yes, yes. I love it. I agree. I agree. So tell us, do you use personal affirmations? Do I use personal affirmations? I always say today will be a good day. Mm. Today I'll get things accomplished that I said I was going to do. And I always say, regardless of what happens, I'm going to get something done today. (laughs) So those are things I always say. Okay. I love that. I love that. All right. So... So tell us about an aha moment that you had lately and how you've changed as a result. What is an aha moment for me? Oh, well, this is something I already knew, but just the overnight process. So Mm -hmm. in our mind, we have this process, hey, I'm going to get this done in two months, right? And then two years later, is just now getting completed. So my aha moment, regardless of how much, because I always say there's no such thing as an overnight success, but my aha moment is always, it's not going to happen today. <laughs> you got to give it time. And if it doesn't work out, it's a reason. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like, this has to get done now. I want it done by this day and it doesn't happen, but it's a reason that it didn't happen. So that's it for me. I have to remind myself that. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I have to, I have to, because it's just like, today is Tuesday. And I'm going to make this product or service and I'll have it complete, done, ready to go to market by July. But it doesn't happen like that. And you're like, why is stuff not happening for me? Like, what am I doing wrong? Right. But in actuality, it just really wasn't your time. And for Mm -hmm. me, every time I've had to start over on certain things, it was a reason. So, yeah, that's my aha moment. Okay, so timing, trust the process. You are talking to me. Look, you must have been looking through my window. Look, you are t- <laughs> you are talking to me. And that is important, right? Because again, like these narratives that we've been told, you know, or we see people at whatever stage in life, but we don't see the year. Exactly. Like we don't see that. Right. So it's this mirage that we're chasing and then beating ourselves up or allowing ourselves to get into a depression or what have you when it's like we're, we don't have a realistic lens. Right. And realistic expectations. So I think that that is a great tip. All right. So tell us about a leadership practice or principle that governs your life. A leadership practice is being able to be open for criticism. And when I say criticism, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but being able to be open to criticism because you may think what you're doing is the greatest and everybody else may hate it. <laughs> so you gotta, be, you gotta be open to it, especially if you have products and services because you just like, I work so hard on this. It's gonna be so good. Everybody gonna love it. And people gonna be like, it sucks. So you got to be open to criticism and knowing how to, you know, navigate the room, change what is needed, but understand the process 
of it as a whole. I feel like if you're a leader and you're always right and everybody else is wrong, you're not a leader. Hmm. I like that. Right. So the value of feedback. I ask people for feedback and they always think I'm looking for something negative. Like feedback even has a negative connotation. Right. But even if it's good or bad, the value of it is priceless, in my opinion. Right. Because you can grow, you can pivot, you can do so many things with that information. But without it, like you said, you could be going down the totally wrong path. You know, but you you were hesitant to ask people or you overlooked what people were telling you along the way. So, right. You got to be ready for anything that's going to come. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. All right. So tell us about a recommended resource and how you utilize it. That could be personal, business, what have you. My mentors, my mentors keep me, keep me there. My mentors and my business besties, <laughs> those are my resources. Listen, they keep me together. <laughs> they like, snap out of it. <laughs> Get over it. Like, come on, nah. Okay, so what's next? Or this is how we gonna help. Or you need to get this done. Things like that, So yeah. Nice. They keep so the fire you- under my butt. <laughs> and we need that, right? So do you have any tips for anyone that may be like looking for a mentor or looking for a business bestie? Like, how did you find your mentor or your business besties? You know, or what advice do you have for people to find one? Or do you have one? When it comes to finding a mentor or a business bestie, just make sure they're aligned with you. Mm. Because you may think somebody's awesome, but they're not aligned with you. You got to make sure those people are, they don't have to have the same occupation or business or anything, but just make sure they're aligned with you. So when anything goes on, you all can figure it out because everybody that's a mentor, but just may not be a good mentor for you. Mm -hmm. So research, if you know the person, see how it's going to work out, things like that. Like, so me and my business besties, we meet four days a week. I tried that with other people. We can't even meet one day a week. <laughs> like we're not, <laughs> like it, it never works out. Like, so we're not aligned. So you just have to make sure you're aligned when it comes to getting any of them so they can help you. You can help them. You can feedback. Y'all can talk about things. You can get it done. Okay. Okay. So when you say aligned, right? Like I heard you allude to schedules matching, but what else do you mean by make sure that they're aligned with you? that you like them. That's one alignment. <laughs> You'd be like, I don't even like this person. I can't even do them. They get on my nerves. Like, I need another mentor. I mean, yeah. So things like that. Just make sure you even like them. <laughs> like you suck, man. I don't even like talking to you. So <laughs> nah. So think of things like that. Make sure they're aligned. I don't think they have to necessarily have more experience with you depending on what you're looking for, but make sure that whatever it is, they can help you or you can help them or it's an even exchange and it's not just a take, take, take type of thing when it comes to them. All right. I love that. Okay. So what advice do you have for an up and coming entrepreneur? In addition to all of the gems, look, what else do you have or any like a key advice you may have received that you want to pass on? You got to have money to be an entrepreneur. Mm. Please stop listening to these folks online talking about all you need is $100 or $200. I ain't never started a business that costs that cheap. I had to drop money. I don't care what nobody say. I think about they had that post that was like, if you, if your stimulus $600 or $1,200, <laughs> start an LLC. I said, I ain't never did nothing that was $1,200. I spent out money. I was like, it may be some business out there where they don't have to put up money, but I got to put up money. like. I don't know nobody that's starting no business with just $1,200. That's just me. So don't believe the hype on TV. You need to have some kind of money when it comes to entrepreneurship because you may start the business and it may not work out or you may not be making money as quickly. So, and when I say money, it could be a second job. It can be savings. It can be whatever it is, but it usually takes money to make money. And that goes for the business, if you invest in or any of those things, because I just don't know too many where you don't have to have no money. And I know people that drop shipping, they be like, oh, no money for drop shipping. 
you still got to buy stuff and pay for stuff. Like it's, you got to have money. So work towards having something. Don't just say, I'm going to start this business because online they say you ain't got to have no money. Yes, you do. (laughs) Yes, you do. So, and I'm not saying don't do it if you don't have any money, but I am saying that throughout your process, you're going to learn that you have to have some type of money, especially when you are continuing to grow. Okay. Okay. Now what, drop a gem for us about how to, well, I know you said a second job, you know, but what is a, I guess, money tip? Do you have a money tip for us? Money tip. Okay. So I don't know if this is a, I don't know if it's necessarily a money tip, but this is something that one of my mentors always say, I may not be the smartest person in the room, but I'm the hardest worker in the room and I'm going to outbeat you every single time. Mm. So I always say, you don't have to know everything and you don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the richest. You don't have to be the flashiest, but if you're a hard worker and you understand how to do certain things and get them done, you'll succeed. Mm. Mm. So that's a tip to make money. (laughs) We'll take it. I love that. I love that. You know, so we're talking guys, right? But I will say that Tay is being very humble because she just did something that I think is super amazing that she has not mentioned to us. So can we hear more about this game? Like what I do? Let's hear about this game because I think it's just amazing. And I want to know more and I want the listeners to know more. Oh, okay. So we built a game. It's called Game of Fortune, Winning Wealth or Losing Debt. It's a financial literacy card game for anybody that's 10 years old and up. And so it talks about wealth, debt. It gives you financial definitions. It gives you real life scenarios. And it just teaches you about the fundamentals of money because a lot of people don't know about them. So with this card game, we implemented a lot of things that come from real life. So you can actually have an understanding with it when you get to whatever position it is that you're getting, whether you're working, whether you're just like, what does this mean? I'm still trying to understand it. So it is a awesome financial literacy game, in our opinion, (laughs) and some people that have played because it's learning. You learn and you have fun. And people are like, well, I always want to learn something about financial literacy, but I don't just want to read a book. So we was like, what better way to do it than to make it into a game? Yes, yes. You can play with family, you can play with friends, parents, you can play with your kids. Like you want to learn together. So if you don't know something, you're like, well, son, daughter, let's do this together. Let's figure it out. And let me see, can I beat you? (laughs) So yeah, that is what it is. Game of fortune, winning wealth or losing debt. I love that. I love that. Now, how, I'm like, how do you make a game, make it applicable for 10 up to adult? Because we tried to make it simple. We didn't want to make it too hard. So we made it as simple as possible. Like, so when you go through the game, you're going to be like, well, this doesn't happen every month. But when games get too difficult, <laughs> people don't want to play them anymore. They like, oh, this right. is too hard. So we try to make it as simple as possible. But if you're 10, you can play. I always say if you're 10, you should play with somebody 14, you know, so okay. you get a better understanding of it. But you'll understand it because it, it just deals with money, money in real life situations. So like we have income cards with our income cards. They have definitions on them that talk about gross and net Mm. because a lot of people don't know that and Mm -hmm. so on the card you have your gross pay and then you have your net pay a lot of people don't know what that is then you have your money after expenses so it's just a lot of different things on the card so like some of our cards have 401ks on them we talk about 401ks we talk about stock we talk about real estate we talk about all that and I don't think it's ever too young to understand now, five year old, they probably be like, I don't care about credit. <laughs> Ain't nothing I'm worried about right now. But I do feel like by the time you get to 10, which is around middle school, that you should start learning something. So when you actually get to a certain age, it won't be as difficult to understand. Or like a lot of us, depending on how you grew up, you figured everything out when you got into the real world and you were just like, I gotta pay what? I gotta do who? I ain't supposed to pay this credit card on. So yeah. So we just, Try to give them something that they can play and understand, but also be simple. Cause I love games and I do like game nights with friends and everything. But when stuff get hard, we were like, we don't want to play no more. Yeah. We play one game like that. We was like, we don't understand it. We just gonna make up our own rules. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna make up our own rules because we don't we don't get it. So yeah, we try to make it simple for me. I don't know about everybody else, but 
a lot of other people were like, yeah, stuff too hard. You just, I'm going to play the game. So, yeah. I love that. I love that. I think that is amazing and necessary, right? Like why they don't teach financial literacy in school is beyond me. And I've even been hearing from some people that have nonprofits that like they tried to add financial literacy in there and some grants won't approve them or won't, some people won't even give them grants because they have financial literacy in their programs, which is like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, right? we have a yeah, we have a financial literacy program that we'll be putting out before the end of summer. It's for K through twelve. So that's awesome. Needed, needed, right? It, it's past needed because we just don't know. <laughs> it's past needed and we just don't know. We gotta figure it out somehow. So it's yeah. good to already know now. If you know and you decide not to do it. But some people just don't know anything about it. I've never heard anything. So, yeah, I love it. Yes, don't be like me, right? So, I used to teach financial literacy right out of college for a nonprofit. We were teaching seniors. Mm -hmm. So, I know all of the rules, right? Don't pay the minimum, this and that. I got into a place in my life where I was paying the minimum on a credit card every month, paying the minimum, just got into this rotation. Well, like, 10 years later, I still had the same, I had maxed out the credit card, still had the same balance, right? Paying these people a hundred, hundred some dollars a month. I did a calculation. I paid these people like twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 off of a $3,000 credit card. Don't be me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be me. Get the game, yeah. learn your things and do the right thing thing once you learn it. Yep. Hmm. It's, it's real. It's real. And then, and then it'll make you cry when you think about it. If you know how much money you're giving away or, you know, the things that are passing you by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have a favorite quote that you like to share with us? The one I said earlier. I just like that one. I may not be the smartest worker in the room, but I'm the hardest worker in the room. I just think it's great because I know some people that are really not smart. <laughs> But they work hard and they know how to talk. They know how to do everything. They get out there and get it. Like while everybody else sleep, they up and running and made two deals. So I just feel like that is, that's it for me. Like that's my, that's one of the quotes. I'm just like, people asking that, mm -hmm, that's what it is. <laughs> okay. Okay. So don't let anything hold you back, basically. Let your work speak for itself and put in the work, right? Yes, always. All right. So before you tell us about where to find you, I like to ask what I consider to be fun questions. Okay. I love travel and I believe that travel is enriching and it's definitely a way to pour back into yourself. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us where you went for your last vacation? What's your favorite vacation place and, and where you want to go in the future? So my last vacation was Mexico. I stayed there for six months. Mm. Yeah, I sat there for six months last year. I needed a mental break. What part? Playa de Carmen. Okay. Yeah, I needed a mental break, so that's where I went. <laughs> One of my favorite places to go is Honduras. I think they have awesome seafood. I'm a seafood person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, 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 great seafood. And where I want to go next is Africa. I wanted to go to Africa and just kind of visit for a little bit because they have really nice oceans and beaches and all those kind of things. What part? Oh, Johannesburg. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. yeah, I heard they have like a, so it's like the summer, but then they have penguins and I'm like, how does those two exist? I heard it's really nice though. I'm looking forward to going soon whenever they figure stuff out. I don't know, it still might be closed, but yeah, that's one of the places I want to go to. Okay. All right. All right. So Tay, tell us where we can find you, where people can purchase your game. Okay. So you can find us on our website at nevergobroke.money. Remember, not .com, .money. So nevergobroke.money. And then the game can be purchased at gameoffortune.money. But if you go to nevergobroke.money, it is a link up there for you to click on there too, just in case you forget. So and we're all social media platforms at Never Go Broke INC. Okay. And if they want to follow you? Oh, I am Taylee. T A E L E E. 
All right. Well, Tay, thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us today, telling us what we need to get our money situation together, get our mindset together, and just sharing yourself with us. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of When Hers United. I hope you found this information useful and can take at least one thing away to implement into your life. Don't forget to go to winhersunited.com forward slash podcast to read the show notes for this episode and check out Tay's full bio. And also follow us on Clubhouse at Win Hers United so you can join us in a future room. As always, be empowered and empower on.